So, good morning, everybody, and thank you for uh, coming. It is uh, a pleasure uh, today to have here Marcos Gonzalves from Universidad Federal de Minas de Gerais. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> in uh, Brazil, uh, he is uh, visiting us uh, as part of the world class university program uh, run by UniPD. And uh, this is the uh, a first talk uh, about uh, his and uh, his group of uh, research uh, activities in order to introduce uh, a little bit of the topics we are uh, he is covering and to foster collaboration with uh, all of us to uh, start the discussion. Uh, so Marcos, as I said, is a full professor at UFMG. He's also a PhD from Virginia Tech in uh, USA and is a uh, member of the Brazilian Academy of Sciences. He published more than 300 uh, papers in an uh, area of AI, uh, information retrieval, and uh, natural language processing. And he's a senior PC member of uh, the top tier conferences in now our area. So, CIGAR, CIFAM, ECIR, uh, AI, ECR, EM. NLP, Wisdom, WWW, Rexist, and, uh, and so on. So it's really a pleasure to have you here, Marcos. Uh, 10 years later. Yeah, yeah <laughs> we, we, we started also working together in the digital library. Yeah, 10 years uh, ago. Yes, uh, at that time. Uh, and so it's really good to have you back here. Thank you very much, Nicole. Um, um, yes. Uh, I, Thank you, Nicola, very much for uh, receiving me here, for you, for the, the audience, uh, and for the, the, the UPG, for the project that is funding me, my visit here. Uh, so let's start. Uh, what I try to do here is to have a broad overview of things we do in Brazil. Uh, not everything, we have other efforts, but uh, the idea is exactly what Nicola said, uh, uh, foster possible uh, directions, possible collaborations. So it's a broader review, and I apologize if the, 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 the talk is too long and I may cut some pieces. Uh, and if you want to, to look for details of some of the works I will talk here, well, we have we will have discussions in the afternoon and tomorrow. So uh, the idea here is to give a broader overview of what the things we do. So the work we are uh, doing right now is, uh, we basically take advantage of years of work on the three fields, uh, information retrieval, uh, machine learning, LP, and uh, we take old ideas to solve new problems and apply new ideas to solve old problems sometimes, but in a different way. So, uh, so we have here uh, some of the works I will talk about here. They cover some of the interconnections among them, but most of them uh, touch the three aspects of NLP, uh, AI, and AI. So this talk I should part, I'll not talk part two today. As Nicola said, uh, this is a collaboration that we will take for uh, I, I, I will have other visits here. So I'll talk most today about some of the more consolidated work that we have published recently. Uh, I will start with a work in uh, was presented just a few weeks ago at CIR. Uh, and there's also a, a, a survey in the ACM computer surveys. Uh, I talk a paper on IPMM, a paper on ACL and CIR, covering exactly these ideas of, of the interconnections among these three areas. So uh, let me start with the, the work uh, just presented a few weeks ago in uh, CIGAR. Uh, it touched on an uh, interesting uh, problem that's not very well known uh, in the field, that's the problem of piston selection. And I will describe what the problem is. Uh, I do not need to talk about the, the, this issue. We know we are all, all, all of us are uh, drawn in, 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 in data and information. We work in Search engineers recommend the systems, classification systems exactly to solve this issue. And most of you know this. Uh, how, uh, where is the state of the art right now? Uh, the state of the art is deep uh, learning, uh, basic transformers to deal with uh, uh, text problems. And the way that this thing works is that we have a, um, yeah, a pre-training pre task where a large language model 
is produced not by us. We don't have the, 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 the uh, computing resources for that. Only big companies like uh, Google or OpenAI can do that. And they train this large language model and a lot of a lot of data, huge amount of data. And we pick these models and apply to our text because we are interested in our research or uh, in our companies. Uh, we do that by fine tuning, what's called the fine tuning process when we have a domain specific application. This thing works very well. You, you uh, all may know that uh, for two reasons. Uh, this large language model has a lot of data and it can really be adapted to other tasks. What's the problem with this? Training, the fine tuning uh, is much faster than building the larger language model, but it's still a very consuming, uh, 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 very computing uh, oriented test. So uh, uh, most of you that have worked with large, large language models know that. It takes a lot, it needs a, a, a specific GPU to, to work with. And this is even worse when we have a test, like for example, we have to, to, to have a retraining of the system, for example, if you are working on a stream line uh, uh, application like social networks and things like that. This is, becomes a problem if you have financial constraints, like uh, you are in a small university or a medium university and you cannot buy the, the specialized hardware that those models need to, to be fine tuned. There's all, 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 always issues with uh, 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 energy carbon emission. So if just to, to give you an idea, the experiments that we had in this paper, only this paper, took about 4,200 hours of continuous computing in a high-end GPU or 105 days of continuous computing. Just to have an idea, just for the fine tuning of the model. It's really a lot of computing, okay? So what we are trying to do with this selection is to help with this problem. It's a very complicated problem. So. The point in, in, with instant selection is we really need all the data that we have for training the systems to, or, or to fine tune our system to work well. Usually the answer is no. See that I, I'm not talking about the problem of labeling. I, I'm considering the labeling of the data where again, again I'm talking about supervised tests. The labeling is done. It was done by crowdsourcing or by uh, same supervising uh, methods, but we have the label. The problem is different now. Now I have the label, I have the, this huge training data. And the point is, the more data I, ha I have, the more costly the process is. So how can I choose or how can I pick the best ex examples in, within my whole data so that I can train my, or fine tune my, my, my system and I get a result that's as good as if I use all the, all the data. That's the main idea, okay? So I can compare this test with a, a, a more well-known task that's called feature selection. Many of you may know, know this test. That's that, and with feature selection, what do we do? If you have a matrix here in where the lines are documents and the columns are terms or words, uh, feature selection just pick words that I can remove without hurting the, 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 the system, without hurting the effective, effectiveness of the model that we create. The instant selection idea is, is to work in the lines of this matrix, where a line is a, a document that I can remove from the training system without hurting effectiveness. That's the idea. How I do that, that's what we will discuss. Okay? So just to formalize that, uh, uh, the task can be uh, described as this. Uh, the goal, main objective of the main goal of instance selection is to maintain or improve classification in the case of the, the world or any supervised task. Uh, effectiveness through an additional pre-processing uh, 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 step, that's a step to select the documents, uh, to reduce the data, in order to get a, 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 a speed up in terms of training. And also, it's very important that I keep this, what we call the strike rate. So for example, we don't want to reduce and have uh, losses in effectiveness. And we want to do, we don't want to reduce and do not have efficiency gains because it will not make any sense. So meet this strike rate is very important in the evaluation of the map. Okay, it's not just effectiveness, it's just not a, a, a speed up. We need to meet all the, all the three criteria at the same time. So for this, we propose this, this uh, new method. That's what we published in uh, CIGAR this year. It's a method that's uh, uh, driven or, or, or 
for to work with uh, 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 transform architectures, it has two steps basically. The first step is uh, is the one that I used to choose the documents that will, uh, I will remove from my training data. That's the what we call the alpha parameter. How do I do that? I will use a weak and calibrated classifier. What's a weak classifier? Is a classifier that's fast that I can run in my training data, pieces of my training data, so that I can get a, 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 a probability that the, uh, the document will belong to certain class. And this weak classifier is, is not as strong as a transformer, but it works well, has a good effectiveness. But in order for that to work, it has to be calibrated. What's, what, that, that's that, what does that mean? It means that the probability that the classifier assigns to a document, it has to correlate well with the accuracy of the, uh, of the classifier. And I can explain this better in this figure here. We have three, uh, four classifiers here, TNN, ROQ, SPM, and IBASE. And what do I do with a, a, a calibrated classifier? I want that the probability that the, the classifier assigns to a, a, a document uh, to be really correlated with the accuracy of, the, of the, 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 the classifier. For example, if I say that I have 80% of, of certainty that the, the, that document belongs to that class, in 8% of the cases, I'm, I'm right. That's the idea. And we see that many of the classifiers uh, out there are not calibrated at all, okay? For example, in Rocky, you have probability concentrated concentrate only in this area here. Uh, like base, the, the probabilities are constant, independent of the accuracy. Same for SVM, same for, uh, we did for the neural uh, classifiers, they have a really bad uh, estimation of, of probabilities. And we need a good estimation of probability to be sure that we will remove a, a document that's relevant for the, 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 the the next step of, of, of training. Did you get the idea? So that's my point. Uh, we need a, a weak classifier to run our first uh, step of assigning probabilities to, to the documents, to the training data. We run, uh, we choose KNN because a fast and a uh, calibrated classifier. We run in, in pieces of the training data. If the KNN gets the, the class right, we assign the probability. If not, it gives zero. And then we normalize the thing by, by, by uh, the total amount of probabilities. And then what we do, we remove in order of the probability, the instance that we, uh, we are more confident that in the hypothesis that the more confident, the more ready done for the training of the transform. The second uh, step of the, uh, of the algorithm is the, uh, the set of the beta parameter. That's just the rate of reduction that we will have. And we have an incremental process for that, for example. I, 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 if I remove 5% of the data, I have the training with 100%. If I remove 5% of my training data, in that order of the alpha, uh, the highest alpha, I will remove first and then I will go further. What happens with my, uh, my accuracy? If I stay at, at least statistically equivalent, I can remove more. And I go further, in basically better steps, until I reach a point where I, I can get some, I get some losses in the hypothesis. It's just that, okay? The main hypothesis is that we, we can estimate the, this rate of removal for a strong model, for a, a, a deep learning model using a weaker model. And then we test our hypothesis, okay? So we implemented the, that method and we test 19 data sets uh, plus uh, standard Test classification data sets, and these are some of the results. We are not the best method in terms of reduction of the training data. We, in average, uh, were able to reduce in 25% what's significant, the size of the training data. There were some other baselines that reduced more, but they reduced more with losses in effectiveness. We, uh, for example, this one here, uh, CIS reduced in almost 75%, but it, uh, only four data set was able to keep the effectiveness. So remember the tripod, you have to have all those requirements at the same time. So when we look together at the tripod, we see which one are the best methods. So here's the number of data sets when we, we apply uh, the, the methods. Here's our, our number of, of the data set in which we could uh, keep or maintain the effectiveness. So our method from 20 was able to keep effect effectiveness 
19 of them with reductions with speed ups, 19 of them. The second best, for example, in terms of, of keeping the effectiveness was LSS 10, but we, we, we speed ups were able to, to uh, it was able to do speed ups on only half of them. So our metric, when we consider the tripod is the best, okay? But does it, it work in all situations? And we learned that no, right? not our method, but also the baselines did, did not work well in big data scenarios. And we have uh, data sets with at least uh, or more than 1,000 instances. Neither us nor the baselines work at all in these situations. Um, so we have to improve at least our, our method because the baselines just simply doesn't work, do not, the baselines do not work in those situations. In our case, we had two problems. First of all, the incremental uh, way of finding the, the, the beta parameter uh, is cost increasing with the size of the training data because PNA is quadratic. So if it, uh, the, 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 the training data increases, we have a problem to apply our strategy because we run training many times. It depends on the step, the back step. So what we did was we analyzed our results the, that 19 other uh, data sets and we found some correlations between the rate of reduction and the imbalance of the data set, the size of the, the documents, the amount of the documentation you have in the documents. So we, we came up with this simple risk that in the practice work very well. Uh, rule one, if the documents, if the, the class distribution is embarrassing, we are conservative. We reduce by 25%, just that. We don't have a, a, a process. Rule two, if the, if the class distribution is balanced, but we have a uh, few information per document, the documents are short, we are also conservative. We reduce by 25. Otherwise, we are we reduce in, in 50%. And that's the rule. For the second modification, is a, a memory issue. We, uh, if you will want an exact KNN, we have memory issues. We substituted that for an approximated KNN. And in our experiment, we saw that the approximated KNN is as good as the, 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 the exact KNN in terms of effectiveness. It is also calibrated. So we served our purpose. So we changed that. So these are the results in the uh, uh, large data sets, Asian used uh, ELP Medline. The, most of them, this is the one here, has 700,000 700, documents, I think. And see, if we apply our, our uh, the risk is 25%, we can, we still keep effectiveness. These results are as good as applying the whole uh, training data. And we have speed up of 1.7% and 1.3%, 1.54%, reducing the training size by, by one fourth. That's a good result. But if we are a little bit flexible and allow a, a small loss in effectiveness, let's say 5%, that was the test that we showed here in orange, we can go up to 80% of reduction and the speed ups of six times, losing from 94 to 89% here, 5% of loss. In here, just a little bit, uh, almost a tie, but we can reduce in 50%. So there are ways to go even better with our evolutions. But we stop here and we will continue later. The student uh, now is in Pisa with Fabrizio Sebastiani working on that. Okay, guys, everything fine here. First work, okay? I will present for today. Uh, so I have, I have to go faster. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we uh, we talked first about uh, uh, efficiency. Now we are talking about effectiveness. Uh, why we concentrated on transformers, and uh, we wonder why are they so good, man? We try to answer that, that question. The question that people just assume they are good, but don't know why. So the question we try to answer is like that: Why are contextual embeddings that are, they are produced by transformers? Are so good for tasks, high R tasks, and then NLP tests, last text classification. And our point is that the answer depends on the task, of course. So let's go task by task for, for this. We are very uh, familiar with the text task of this text classification. So we start looking at that. And what we do in text classification, you separate documents in symmetric classes. So that's a matter of separation, or that's a matter of separability. So we try to measure that. Instead of focusing on, only on uh, macro F1 accuracy, we try to see what's the separability of the space induced by contextual embeddings. Okay? So that's the, 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 the question that, that we try to answer here. We 
compare the separability, there are several metrics, separability metrics in the literature for doing that. We compare with the separability of uh, um, contextual embeddings, static embeddings, and um, bag of words. We really ask if the separability comes from the largest language model or the fine tuning. That's one, one issue that we look at that. We compare the performance of different classifiers with different representations that have different levels of separability. We compare BERT with uh, other transforms, BERT or BERT, in terms of separability. And we look at how separable is the space when we uh, train with a document, you find it in the data, you find it in your model in one type of data and apply it to other. That's the, 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 the transfer learning process. So that's basically the uh, idea what we did. We have a text encoder here, okay? And that text encoder can be uh, uh, produced in, in different ways. Uh, we have a class separability evaluator. We have a classifier after, after we produce the, 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 the vectors and we measure the, 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 uh, how good the classifier is and we correlate the class separability uh, uh, metrics with the effectivity metrics. Uh, to produce the, 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 the encoder, we have three scenarios. We have the zero search scenario where we do no fine tuning. The, what we call the full shot scenario, the normal uh, uh, fine tuning process when the data source is equal to the target source. In the transfer learning scenario, when we have the, the, the different uh, data source and target source. And these are some of the, uh, we apply that in a lot of data sets, I will not enter in details, but we have some interesting results. So this is the, the teasing, uh, 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 visualization of the separability of the data sets. Here the fast stacks apply to the ACM data set, and we see that for fast stacks in ACM, it's a mess. See? Each point is a document uh, and the colors are the classes, and there's no separability at all. And we do the fine tuning. We have a much better separability. There, of course, there are some errors. There are some documents in the wrong, let's say, cluster. But it's much better. So the issue, the point is, what does the trick is really the fine tuning. We have the same here for the 20 NG. Fast stack is a mess. It, this is a stack embedding, but it's not working well. Just, just the, uh, the vectors. I'm not saying that the classifier will not work well. But the classifier has to do a, lo a lot of work if it gets our like this. Okay. Uh, zero shots and things. Zero shot is really even worse than uh sex and uh, Bert. Yeah. And we have an almost perfect case for Bert here, almost perfect separability. And again, fast X is a little bit better, zero shots than this. So the trick is fine tuning. Okay, the language model is not the point. And we confirmed that uh, with our separability metrics. We run three separability metrics, we correlate, and they are really uh, very well correlated. And we see the same patterns that we saw in the visual, we saw here in the values. Both in fact stacks have a similar separability. That was surprised because we thought that fact stacks to have a better separability, it's not, it was, it's not the case. Uh, but zero shot batteries really bad in terms of separability, and we saw that in the graph, and Phantom Bat has a very high separability. Maybe basically it solves the problem. See, for example, in that I didn't use that was saw that the figures the uh, figure was almost perfect, very, very high separability. And the also interesting thing is that those separability numbers correlated well with the with the map F1 and the matrix. That's exactly what we see here. We run Several of us find multilayer perception like base, SDM, several of them. And uh, that is known. We saw the behavior that was expected. When the, the separability of the representation, both fact stacks, zero shots, is not good, the classifier has to do most of the work. Okay? And the best worker is SVM. We know that for text classification because we know since Joaquin is the nice, when you have a uh, 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 a vector in a large space, the space is separable, separable. even linear SVM works well. But the surprise was here. When you have a, 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 a representation that is as good as Phantom Bat, basically all classifiers are the same. It doesn't matter the classifier who runs. All are the same. You can run a simple classifier like, like a nearest centroid, just assign the document to the nearest centroid, 
all run on the hoops or SBA, or linear regression, you got the same result. Because basically, they have representation uh, as of the problem. That's the, the, the point. Okay. Does this mean that we do not have to work in algorithm anymore? No, we have, but we just need to have algorithm that works better for the situations that uh, because fire are not working. Those points that we see that are in the wrong place. I don't, I don't have an algorithm to solve this right now, but at least it gives us some motivation. Okay. Um, okay, I'm fine. I'm almost in the hatch. That's good. Uh, here is just a correlation between the separability and Macrofion, and we, we confirm that the higher the separability, the higher the Macrofion, and the ones in the top right position are exactly the transformers, Bert, Oberta, Bart. Okay, just confirmation of our, our, our hypothesis. This is the, uh, the transfer learning scenario, and when we, we Create the model using one data and you test another. In some cases, it works, like this one. This one, we have the zero shots, completely mixed up here. We train my greater move, that's a, 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 a review of moves. You apply to a review, review to this thing. That we have good separation, we can imagine that. Two shots is always better, almost. Better. Okay. But there are cases when this, this does not work, like this one. Zero shot here, as in use, and we could not transfer the knowledge at all because there are really important differences between those, these data sets, even though they are for the same domain, these are news. The class distribution is different, and the class distribution here is unbalanced, and here is balanced. And here we have four, four classes, here we have two in. We could not transfer the knowledge. Okay, okay guys. Uh, but uh, we do have failures. Our models, uh, some of the results we got in uh, these experiments, and, and we have everything that you want to try, the data, everything is reproducible. Then, okay, we have very good results, 95%, 94% in matter of human, but we have cases of failure. And what turned out, uh, uh, reading years of literature in these three fields, that people really do not do a raw analysis. And do not go deep to understand why did I fail and on those documents. So we face, uh, we say, okay, well, let's open the Pandora box and let's look at that. Okay. So why uh, are we uh, having errors? So what we did was uh, we do an analysis of errors. Uh, we follow this procedure here. We get those classifiers and we get the set of, of, of uh, documents where all classifiers got it wrong. Okay, so the hardest cases, we create a reclassification taxonomy picking a piece, a sample of those cases, the cases where all classifiers are got it wrong, trying to find come up with reasons for, for, for the, 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 the misclassification, and we came up with a taxonomy. We then got a, a different uh, 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 sample of the uh, of the these documents here. And they did, they did it for, for people to classify using the taxonomy to really understand what, is, what was going on. This is the taxonomy. Okay, so uh, what we uh, actually did, we give a, a text like this, the uh, review. We use, in this case, uh, three data sets for sentiment analysis one for movie uh, review, two for movie reviews, and one for product reviews. And this is the label outside by the human, this is the, 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 the label outside by the model, and we ask it for the evaluators, eight evaluators, four in computer science, four in uh, linguistics. Who is classified the text? It was the human, the model, or you simply don't know. Okay? And given the answer to that, we have poss possibilities for the misclassification. What sarcasm? It was the, the, the review was sarcastic, and it was hard to get that for the, for the model to get that, for example, for the human to get that. Possible ambivalence when the review had positive aspects of the product of, of, of the movie and the model could not wait to both at the same time. You had to do a decision, bad or good, because the, the, the review had both aspects, positive and negative. Insufficient information, uh, the text does not have information. The text in reviews are really short. So it may, may be the case. You don't, don't have information there for classifying. Uh, you have sufficient information about the mother failure, you have sufficient information about all the human failure. 
See that it only makes sense if you choose humans here. Yeah, but we left for the evaluation too, and we went there. Results of this exercise, we had a large agreement on the first question, 86% of agreement. And most of them was uh, the four evaluators that are, each question was, was, was evaluated by four evaluators, okay? Each job. Most of them agreed on four or three uh, agreements. So it was a very uh, high inter-agreement, inter-rate agreement. And that's uh, what was the main result. In the Amazon data center, that this data set with uh, product reviews, uh, most of the errors are by the model. The model really got it wrong. But the human also, what's this case here is that the evaluator considered that the model gave the right class and the human gave the wrong one. Four evaluators agree with that. So this is a label error. This is a noise. I don't know. There's some reason for the long, wrong label by the human. It's a very large piece of tea we, we see here, 33%. I don't know what happened, but that happens. Uh, the, 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 the human error is smaller in the movie data set, but it still exists. Don't know, it's very low. Okay? And there is also uh, some disagreement, but not very high. But see, there are errors by humans and errors by the model. Very interesting finding that we have. See, those are the results for the second question. We had a smaller agreement, but still had a high agreement of 81%, not as good as before. You see, four agreements here are more less frequent, but we still have good agreements. And these are the results for the second questions. Uh, insufficient information, what was the reason? Less than 5%. So most of the evaluators considered that we had enough information that text for was fine, but for some reason, the human or the, 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 the model got it wrong. There was almost no sarcasm in product reviews. Now, people are very direct in you know, why, why you're doing product reviews. The product has this thing is good, this thing is not good, and that's it. And uh, reviews of, mo of movies tend to be more sarcastic, sarcastic the language they use. And that was the main reason for uh, errors uh, of the classified in the second, in the two movie reviews. If we expand this, this thing here, uh, it was that uh, 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 the model got it wrong. We have something like this here. We move review sometimes is very frequent. Uh, we reviews here uh, at least 23%. So it's a big issue. So you may have to first find that the review is sarcastic and then tweet in somehow that review before you do the classification. That's one way you, you try to deal with that. But for the model or the human sarcasm, sarcasm is very difficult to deal with. And in product review, only violence is very high. It's the main reason for, for uh, failures. But more important than that, in at least 41% of the cases, uh, we found that there was sufficient information in the data set and we don't know the reason the model failed, but the model failed. It could be insufficient training data. It could be lack of vocabulary. We don't know, but there's still 40% of the cases we can explain. So there's a lot of work still to do on this. Okay, guys. So, okay, two out of four. <laughs> okay, let's do another one. Uh, okay, so we talk about uh, uh, efficiency. We talk about representation. This one is also about representation. But this is an interesting idea of a PhD of, of mine that, okay, we have uh, uh, contextual representations, we have embeddings that are so good, but there are also good things about both, back of words, uh, the frequencies approach, they are more explainable. Uh, so the idea, his idea was, could we combine back of words and embeddings for that in some way could do well in some applications, uh, IR or in LP. And this work was funded by the uh, Google Latin America Research Award. Uh, that's is that more, more or less like the Google Research Award for the world, but for, for, was for specific for Latin America. And this idea is very simple, but very, I think it's very uh, smart. What we do simply is uh, we have a word and we create a cluster of words. That's the name, the crew words, okay? 
So what we put in this cluster, we put statically similar words, we put symmetrically similar words. This, uh, similar, similarity can be calculated, for example, by the cosine distance between the variables. Uh, the but that's not only that, because if we just do that, if you just cluster, you may have a lot of uh, noise in that those clusters. For example, for a sentiment analysis that task, you may have a cluster that has in the same cluster negative and positive uh, uh, words. Good and bad is an example that's known to be closed in the embedding space. If you just cluster by similarity, you have uh, words with different polarities in the same word. And that's not good for the, the application. So in some cases, we want to filter out what's in the cluster to make it uh, better fit the application you have. Okay. And more than that, we also want to wait. That's the good thing about the, 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 the bow method that some words are better for some applications in some are more representative or more representative or of the document than other words for some applications like retrieval, ad hoc retrieval, or uh, recommended system. So we want to wait the, 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 the two words based on, uh, on the importance for that document. So that's the main idea. Okay. So here, uh, how we do the semantic TF, we call, we have the, the, the traditional document by words uh, 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 matrix. You have a semantic matrix and we calculate the similarity between of words using uh, text text or whatever you have. And you have the idea of components. That's just a uh, vector with the, 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 the corpora idea. You do this uh, operation and you have your two words, documents by words that have some comp uh, uh, similar components and you have a component at the same time. And the first thing we did for, for that, this first application we, we applied the idea was a natural one for us because uh, 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 no uh, non supervised one was top modeling when we extract uh, uh, talks for the document word matrix. Yeah, you have something like this. You have documents, you have words, and by applying, for example, AMF, that's a traditional top modeling thing, you get talks for, for your data set. So that's the, the, the first application of the two words that we did. Exactly the, 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 the word, what I said, we have the, 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 the semantic matrix that's built with the word embedding space. Our filtering process here was just to filter out some noise, we uh, removed. 5% or 10%, we kept the 95 percentile of the words that are more similar to each other. So it was a, a filtering based on, on uh, the similar, the, the, uh, how close they the, the, the vector were to each other. And the way is exactly what I showed you before. So we, then we have the document of words, uh, 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 matrix that incorporates semantics and the filtering. And we apply the NMF exactly over this matrix. That's it. Our second application is an extension to this idea. When we have a hierarchical top modeling, we have a hierarchy of, of, of talks. For this, we just extended with a, a, a method that we know that uh, is able to choose the best, the, the depth of the, 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 the hierarchy. Uh, so this is an interactive process that chooses the, how to, to, to assign a topic to the children. And another extension is that in this case, we also uh, played with contextual embeddings. We got a back embeddings. The problem here is that with contextual embeddings, you have different embeddings for the same word in different contexts. So we have to do some pooling in order to get a static embedding to apply to the two word generation. Because for the two word generation, you have, all, you have to have only one embedding per word. Okay. So these are some of the experimental results. Uh, uh, this is the NPMI basically measures the coherence of the words inside the top. And we can see that our two words is really very good, much better than all the baselines, but we see in the NMF that was just the, 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 the state of the art at the time. But even when compared to CNMF, we are better or like this or tight. So we really stood out here. And for the hierarchical classification, more, even more than that. All the four things that appear here, much, much above these baselines, are the four variations of our method. All the method that uses the flex sex or the contextual index, much higher than the other ones. 
it was really a uh, so that's the result that we saw. But when we look at the results, you see, uh, okay, you have a near NPMR close to one in your case. Are your talks perfect? And you, are, you know that you're looking at talks, they, they are far from, from, from uh, perfect. So there are some issues here. So uh, uh, do the evaluation methods really capture what we want? In many cases, no. The answer is no. Okay. Uh, any PMI is okay when you look inside the top. Okay, but there are other issues, uh, especially if you consider the hierarchical version, because in hierarchical version, you want, for example, one talk uh, to have two talks that are specializations of the, 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 the file. And also, you don't want to have two talks that are very much, very alike from each other. You want to have some diversity among the sub talks. If other sub talks are the same, you may have a really, really good any, any PMI if one sub talk is the same, because you uh, inherit that good. Uh, value for the calculation of the metric. So the question is, uh, can, are we capturing we do this, for example, in the evaluation? And the answer was no. And we look, for example, for one of the methods, uh, and let's say show here, I will show in the evaluation. But when you look at the main talk and the sub talks, we see that simply the method, what the method is doing is repeating the same good sub talk. And this good sub talk made the evaluation method go times. So we are, the point is, uh, the, the, the evaluation method was not capturing an important uh, aspect of the application that we want. For that, we had to come up with new methods. Uh, so we are we suggest new methods for, to calculate the, uh, the similarity or, 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 or how can I say that? The, uh, how diverse, is that? that's the word that I was looking for. How diverse are the subtops of a single father that we call the intertopic distance and the distance between the intertop uh, in different fathers? Those are the metrics I can give you the details later uh, when we are, if you want to discuss. And those are some of the results of these metrics, the uniqueness. Just, it's a simple jacka, okay? But uh, it looks in, 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 in the uh, diversity among the sets between. As children and uh, fathers from the same topology in different topology. And we can see that several of the, of the top modern uh, really generated good talks. Talks are diverse. But there are some problems here. We, we, some problems here. And this was the case when we saw if, that we saw before that idea, we just was repeating the same good sub -talk. So we capture a, a measure that uh, we don't want. The new metric new new allowed us to do that. If you look at the SHS, it's a method that does almost the same, but from the semantic perspective. It, it, it does the jacquard, but instead of considering uh, the same word, consider uh, synonyms based on the distance between the, 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 the metrics. In that metric has much lower values. So uh, we see that, that, that uh, to get diverse topics that are semantically uncorrelated is much harder. Okay. Uh, still, our methods are better than the, the, the baselines, the, low, the values for the baselines. The state of the art baselines are not that good. And interesting, the results with the, the uh, fast text work better than the, 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 the contextual embeds. We don't know why. We have to emphasize that because uh, pooling is still not good, for, for, not good enough for this application. But you see, we are working on this. Okay, guys. And how much time do I have? Basically, oh, okay. Uh, still, uh, very fast with this one before I go to the last talk. Another application of the two words to show the flexibility of our approach. This is an application for sentiment analysis. The flow is the same, closer between and waiting, okay? But uh, we apply different, with different purposes here. In the case of the clustering, what we, the filtering, what we do in the filtering is we filter part of, we do have some filtering based on part of speech. We don't want in the same cluster uh, words that are from different parts, of, different parts of the speech uh, for the vocabulary. For example, we want to mix adverbs with uh, adjectives, substantives with uh, adverbs. We want substantives with substantives. We want the adjectives with adjectives. So we, we do that that kind of filtering. We also filter by polarity, as I said. We don't want in the same two word for sentiment analysis words from different polarities because we want to use to define the polarity. So the clue words should only have 
was of the same polarity. Even if in the embedding space, the, 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 the words are, are closed. And in the waiting step, we, besides with the frequentist approach, we also await by the intensity. How, the intensity of the word for the sentiment analysis. We get that from, for example, some tesauro, aesthetic tesauro. So we see the same flow here, but with, with different implementations of the field and the weighting for a different application. Okay, but the idea, the whole idea of the two words is the same. So it shows the flexibility of the concept. In experiments, again, uh, we show very good, interesting results when compared to back in some state of the art methods. In oh, obviously, we, we, we did not win in all cases, but we, we did in overall we performed the best. Okay. Okay, guys, last, let me take a watch. <laughs> and do to the last uh, example of an application that again unites uh, information retrieval uh, and machine learning in this case. So, this case is uh, um, again a paper published in the last year's TGIR. Uh, it's a, a because tackles. Interesting aspects of the uh, limitations of the deep neural networks for some IR application. The case here is for and also, right, see, in the first talk, I focused on uh, efficiency. The other two was representation. This one here is the last function, the optimization process. Okay? And what's the, what's the problem of the optimization in uh, most of the deep neural, neural networks? Uh, they optimize an average map. Uh, they optimize an average map, like in the CG map or something like that. And that's always the case. Uh, most of the uh, optimization metrics is an average of some. Averages are good, but they have problems. They may hide a high variability. That's what occurs in, in several cases when you have an IR system. You have some queries that you can go really well. They're easy queries. Okay? You may have a query in do really poorly, okay? What we do with risk optimization, that's an area that started 10, 12 years ago in CIGAR, and I have a student that did his PhD exactly on this topic, not for neural networks, but was for uh, uh, traditional IR. Is that with risk sensitiveness, we really try to, to balance it a little bit more, this variability, so you, you can, Balance this performance, now, you not always get uh, performance, uh, you not always get improvements the average, but you reduce the cases when you do uh, we have a poor ranking and you have a bad distribution of the of the result. Why is that important? Because usually you when you have a query that the system perform really bad, you will remember that. Of you if there were of the recommended system is really bad. Uh, you pay well, this, this system recommend that to me. We will remember that much more, much more than the hundreds of good recommendations it gave. <laughs> that, that, that's true. So we want to avoid that. Okay. So that was exactly what what risk sensitiveness, risk sensitiveness or things does. For doing that, it relies on some concepts like the poor rankings, that the ranks that you go uh, poorer than uh, some baseline, or it can be a simple baseline or a rank system like Lab the March, for example. So, what we do is that in this case, without uh, just average optimization, we have two queries when we do, uh, we have performance lower than the N25. With risk optimization, we have one that's above, just one that's got worse, but not by much. Okay. And we have another notion that the, the notion of the good ones, the, the ones when we perform better than some baseline. Okay. Uh, and the metric you want to uh, optimize in the end is something like this. That is actually one of the first metrics that was proposed in this area, the U risk, that's as simple as that. Uh, you want to maximize the reward, that's the difference between your P risk and the baseline. And Diminish the degradation with an alpha parameter. Usually, you give more weight for the degradation because you want to win the reward. Okay? That was fine for traditional AI, and then 
deep neural, deep neural networks came and we were not finding anymore. Why? I don't have, have to defend deep neural networks for IR. We do probably know that they perform very good in many IR tests. Of course, Nicola has people trying to, to, to predict how well a deep neural network will perform without the supervision. And they're a really, really hard test, but they perform really, really well. But the problem is that uh, usually, uh, uh, what the, how does the, the optimization of a, a neural network system, system work? With uh, most cases, with gravity optimization. You know, so you have to, to, to differentiate the equation. So you have to see the, the having a tendency to, to get a better performance at GHF or not. So the function you optimize needs to be differentiable, needs to be smooth. That's the case with MAP or NDCG. Okay? And since the risk, risk sensitive uh, measures use MAP or the NDCG, they are also not uh, differentiated. So we could not do uh, deep, narrow, deep narrow network optimization directly in the equations that exist today for risk sensitivity. That, so that was the main problem. Since map is like gel risk or U risk, I show you, use map, use NDCG, they cannot uh, be used directly in gradient optimization. So then, uh, that said, that on the set, what we did in this work is we, pro we proposed a new function for research signals that could work, was designed to work with the uh, system. Uh, more than that, the system does not rely as for as previous working with sensitiveness does not rely on external baselines. It, it, it has a way to produce its own baselines within the evaluation within the uh, training of the system, the, the network system. With that, we, we were reducing the pool works in about 10% and the state of the art in weak sensitiveness in about 11%. So the, our first question is, is it possible to, to have a risk sensitive uh, 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 formula equation that we could use, uh, we could derive, we could use within GNS? And the answer is yes, okay? Uh, we propose two different ways of doing that. Um, one is called schema loss. That, that is schema loss that was used in the other context, but not in the way we use it here. And that one that was a proposal of our, uh, ourselves for a score that is quite the paper. I'm not thinking the details right now because I don't have time. But it has a, a similar idea. What's the idea? Me, idea. Uh, here you have the, your uh, ground proof system with the relevance of each of the, the, the documents. Here we have your estimated uh, 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 relevance. So instead of computing the difference of this thing, we order the ground proof, we order the uh, the prediction, and we take the uh, experiment correlation or, or the uh, other correlation between the two ones. And this can be differentiated. Okay, that's the main idea. With that, we could apply, the, instead of applying MAPR or NDCG inside the, the, the U risk or gel risk, we, we use stream of loss or R score as the solution for the, for the first problem. What was the second problem? Uh, it was established in 2016 that using a single baseline like BM25 was not good for risk sensitive optimization because the, the optimization would get very biased, biased towards that baseline. So uh, what guys uh, the guys did that was uh, suggest to use multiple baselines and have a way of comparing those bases. Okay. Again, very fine for traditional AI. Does not work in our new scenario. Why? Or is that ideal in our new scenario? First of all, you have to train several baselines in the first equation, uh, in the first phase, uh, to have several baselines to compare with. And well, uh, once the, the process of uh, the network evolution starts, the baseline stays the same. So the network evolves, but the baselines do not evolve. So you have a static view of the world. So that's not the ideal uh, thing. Your baseline should evolve with you so that you can always get better. But it's impossible to train all these things at each app. It's simply impossible from a cost perspective. 
So what we did propose was this, this idea here. So what's with the full process in each app, you have an application of a uh, 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 dropout task to solve generalization uh, and other problems. What we propose is to apply several masks and each of these uh, dropouts make out, makes a different baseline. So if you apply uh, a mask here, if you apply a different one here, with randomly chosen uh, uh, nodes and enough nodes, you have basically each one of these is an IR system. And each one of these is not uh, very well correlated with the, uh, with the others. If the thing is random, and if the dropout has uh, a large uh, number of, of, of nodes that is discussed, we have to measure that. Okay? So in the end, what we have is several baselines that are self-containing. You don't have to have any external analysis, and you get this correlation. This is a little bit uh, more or less what happens in boost. Uh, or embedding, embedding when you have classification, but that was never applied to this proposal here. Okay. Is that good? Let's, let's evaluate. Just before that, in the end, what we want to do is to maximize this function, this risk loss between the, uh, uh, the ground truth system and the, the current network system. And we want to do that. Uh, and to minimize the, 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 this difference here, we throw the smooth risk of the smooth your risk of the, the ground truth, the smooth risk of your system, where the smooth risk uses the stimulus function and the multi dropout that I just explained. Okay, that's the equation we want to uh, minimize. The Those are the experimental results. Uh, we were, much better. We are the state of the art now in terms of uh, results of your risk at them, better than all baselines, without any loss in effectiveness. We just basically tie with the best system, the state of the art system, when we run the paper with the best uh, uh, methods. This is a comparison with uh, the best method at the time, best uh, uh, at the time, you can see that we have gained some 10% uh, in terms of the general risk measure with ties in the in this issue. So that was a uh, uh, really good uh, result. And you also look at which queries we were getting uh, better. See, and we had the hypothesis, the hypothesis that we are doing better in the harder scale. And that was what we uh, actually observed. Here are the queries with. Uh, Poor NDC geomap, 20 to 30 percent. Uh, actually, we ordered by, by, by mapping that the, the, the bottom of the, the, the ranking of the, the queries. And these are the worst queries. And we, we can see we have improvements when compared to the baseline exactly on the hard That's what we hypothesized, and we overstated exactly that. And that's it. Okay, I think I'm one hour. Okay, one hour is. So this is just an overview of my, I, I hope I, can, I could give you an idea of the things we do. Now, I hope that exactly to do the things I, I, I show you. I have other students who work in some, some other stuff, but it's similar to what we have seen. We get ideas of one, one uh, area that we haven't worked before. We see an opportunity in, in a new problem or an old problem that has we see in a different way and try to find a, a, a best way to apply that old idea in a new way or a different fashion. And in most of the cases we solve these hard problems that I have shown. So just to conclude, we have several applications to explore the growing coverages among AI, AI, AI. Uh, as I just said, we propose advanced by ideas from one area to solve problems from another. We tend to look deeper in our research questions. We try to, 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 to get rid of the idea of, okay, we got our results are statistically superior. Let's write the paper. No, we go deeper and try to understand why the things are wrong. And we also try to be very rigorous in terms of scientific correctness. Uh, we do repetitions 30 times if necessary, run cross validation. Uh, we don't we use accuracy if accuracy is not the, the, the best measure. We look at the, what is the right measure for the right problem. 
Thanks that if you evaluate papers in CGI, ICL, that, that most people don't do. But the, most people got it wrong. Do they do not follow the right procedure? Do not have any repetitions. They take the one test, uh, a single test for the that evaluation. That's not right. With a single point, you cannot measure the generalization of your method. People do that things all, wrong all the time. Even if we have to have. If you have to work much more than others, we try to do it right. Okay. And we have real concerns with reproducibility. This word is hard. <laughs> uh, all the data is available, all the code is available. We actually, uh, when we run 10 fold or 5 fold, we made the folds available that people can replicate in the same, uh, 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 the same folds. Uh, everything is available for, for others to test our students. Uh, okay, I'd like to thank, uh, first of all, Nicola yeah, for inviting, uh, inviting me here. The Bundle Shape Award that's funding this visit and the, the next ones. I hope I can work with you guys. Or can come up with more times based on this one. Also, CAPS and CMPQ, uh, these are, those are Brazilian uh, uh, research agencies that are funding our stay in Italy. Uh, me and my wife that will give the talk tomorrow. Josara, Josara, say hello. <laughs> And that's our son, Ross. <laughs> uh, we have a funding for stay one year in, in Italy. Uh, we, are, uh, we have a basis in Polytechnic de Torino because the son is working with a professor there, and uh, there are other people interested in things we are doing. Uh, they are applying NLP and AI in some of their problems, so it's also interesting for me. But I have funding to come here and also uh, go to Pisa to. to work a little bit with Fabrizio Sebastiani. So I really, uh, really use my time here in Italy for one year. And I thank Taps and, and CMPQ for the food. Of course, and thank you very much for your attention for one hour. Thank you very much, Marcos. Any questions, curiosities, comments? As Nicola said, I will be here in the afternoon to talk with some students, people that are interested, if you want to see other works or details of these works, then also tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, go. Wow. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, I don't know if you heard about these uh, Italy yet, but these uh, things, uh, ChatGPT, there were some concerns about privacy a few months ago, and then we did, but. Uh, the first concern about the uh, large language model means and it's important. So um, I was wondering uh, about your first uh, the paper, the first paper you the is a selection. Yeah. Right. Uh, do you think uh, it would be possible to use uh, uh, a similar strategy uh, rather than uh, getting uh, the documents uh, uh, to remove part of them in order to protect the privacy? Uh, and to let's say small, small blank stuff in the, in the document and still obtain uh, satisfactory. Uh, That's an excellent idea. I have never thought about that. It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. Uh, what we did was our process optimized uh, 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 that tripod. We want to uh, keep effectiveness, uh, uh, have, trying to speed up, but we could change the, 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 the function that we optimized. We could keep effective effectiveness. We don't want to do that, but uh, optimizing in kind of uh, private semantic that you you wish. Yeah, that's totally possible. Good idea. <laughs> Any other questions? Curiosities. Test all the other methods, uh, for instance, for uh, the mission of the data, not the mission of the data, the size of the training, and uh, did you have any problems in producing those work, those works? I mean, when you try to because usually, yes, <laughs> yeah, we have. And Colin knows that much better than me because he has concerns on her producibility. Yes, yes, this is all. Uh, the codes that people put there never works. Uh, the data is never the same we said it's in the paper. We had to implement most of the things from the scratch. Yeah, and that's a, lot, a lot of work. Since we did that, we, we used that as an opportunity. So 
That's why we, for, for example, we publish the, 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 the ACM competing surveys because now we have the code, now we have the data, now we can have, compare everything. So we run hundreds of experiments and that's what's very important in the ACM competing surveys. But it's a lot of work. The students spend on one year just doing that. Since you have to do that because you have to compare it, use the opportunity to write a survey and yeah, it, it went well. But it is hard, it's very, very hard. We cannot, uh, most of the case, 80% of the case we have problems. Yeah, that's, that's, that's useful. But also I was wondering about the use of GPU because sometimes you rely on your own experiment and you still have significant differences between one line and the other because they were um, We. When we run with the same seeds and when we replicate with the same uh, 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 configuration, we found minor changes. In and we actually measured that statistically to see if we could. Uh, so that's one of the reasons also that besides doing uh, five fold or 10 fold validation, we run the same fold several times to report the data. But yes, you, you may have that. That makes the experiment even harder, yes, but you have to do it right. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question as well. It's about the two words uh, you have shown. One, you, you were trying to get the both uh, sides, uh, the syntactic and the right. uh, uh, And you shown uh, improvement in the performance, but uh, how was the, the variability of the performance? Because one problem we have given embeddings uh, is that sometimes they are very good or much better than the M25, sometimes uh, they are not. Uh, and this is uh, basically a problem of uh, so is the uh, two world uh, approach uh, making things a bit more uh, stable? That's, that's exactly what, why we uh, we introduced the filtering pro process inside the clue world, because we observe it exactly like that. If you just cluster it, that was a lot of noise and ruin of that. And you say, okay, but how can we clean this up? Because there are embeds that are very good, there are embeds that are so what we did was, uh, okay, we need to be, to be able to, 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 to think about the quality of the things we are close. And, and, but uh, when we try to apply to different uh, uh, tasks, we, said, we saw that the filtering depends on the application. So, but without the filtering, that will not work. But yeah, we observed that. We have some embeddings that are really good, embeddings that are really bad. Do, to, what we try to do to, Make that better is to work on the quality of the cluster before apply that in an application. That's the main idea. Okay, thank you. Uh, other questions? Uh, okay, so uh, let's thank Marcos. If uh, you wish to have uh, a chat or a discuss, uh, we will be here today and uh, Tomorrow, so just uh, drop uh, uh, by in my office, and uh, yeah, we can agree and uh, to find whatever suitable uh, solution for uh, for you. And uh, uh, as Marco uh, uh, anticipated, tomorrow we at the same time, same room, we will have uh, the other talk by Justara and Meda, and uh, she will talk about uncovering individual and social behavior patterns online, research on fake news. Uh, Political campaigns uh, and uh, uh, it's okay. Thank you. Thanks, Marcus. Uh,